Hey, it's Chuck Armstrong with Loudwire Nights, and this is Loudwire Nights On Demand. Chris Robertson of Blackstone Cherry was our very special guest recently, and it was so great catching up with him, man. This aired on Thursday, August 22nd. Let's do it. Well, it's hard to believe, but tonight's special guest has been fronting Blackstone Cherry for 23 years. We are hanging with Chris Robertson, celebrating all things Blackstone tonight. Chris, thanks so much for being on the show, man. Dude, thank you for having me. I sincerely appreciate it. So is it is it hard to believe that this band's been doing it for 23 years? It, you know, when you say it out loud, it, it makes <laughs> you feel a bit old. But, but yeah, man, it's... Uh, it is and it's not at the same time. You know what I mean? It's it's one of those things that we always hoped it would last, you know, this long, but you you never know in this business. It's such a fickle, funny kind of industry where things come and go so fast that you can never be too certain of anything for too long. Yeah. Well, when when you guys started jamming, you know, when you and John started playing together, uh, did you guys have like a goal in mind or was it just Let's see what happens. Not really. It, it wasn't until the final formation when Ben came along and we, you know, we're a full unit that there was a, you know, an end goal in mind of putting out records and stuff like that. But until then, it was just a bunch of kids having fun, man. Yeah, I love that, man. Do you uh, do you spend much time looking back, reflecting on on that time? I have here lately, man. My little boy has really gotten into music and started playing drums and. He started to learn a little bit of guitar here and there. So nice. you know, while I'm talking to him about, you know, what he needs to work on and stuff like that, I just, I, all I can think about is those same conversations that, you know, people had with me when I was that age. So it's maybe a little more so here lately than, than normal, but yeah, I, I do it from time to time. I love hearing that, man. Yeah. And that's, uh, uh, you know, that's all it takes is, is, is your kid to, uh, kind of, you know, force you to to have those conversations and to, to, to look back on it, man. Oh, for sure. Well, here we are, dude, you know, not just looking back, right, but still celebrating new music, still celebrating the release of your eighth album last year, Screaming at the Sky. Uh, you've got some time now between the release of that album and where you're at today. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. You know, I feel like we're probably at the best spot we've ever been, kicking off the tour pretty soon with Nonpoint. Um, you know, going to do that thing that's going to be awesome. Then we're doing, um, let's see. Clutch and Rival Sons. Yeah, then we go yeah. to Europe. Uh, we're going to Europe, taking Aaron Jones with us. And then when we go to the UK, we're picking up uh, Skillet to be along with us as well. So, you know, it's a, it's a year full of being on the road, you know, and that it's uh, and that's what we've always been kind of known for, though, is playing live. So, but, you know, this record has has been pretty successful for us at radio and it's it's helped grow those concert numbers and stuff, you know. So we're, we're really thankful, man, and, and really happy with the way things are going. Well, and, you know, I was going to say that as much fun as this album is, and it really is, man. Uh, it, I think it's such a great just continued progression for the band over the last couple of decades. But uh, it's even funner to see you guys perform live. You know, for anyone who's seen seen Blackstone live, uh, you know what I'm talking about. You know, there's just this energy that you and the whole band embody. It's just a fun night of rock and roll. Uh, and you, you guys embody this energy. It hits the crowd. The crowd responds in kind, and it just makes it, you know, for for a perfect night. Well, like we, we all deal with enough shit on a day to day basis that when we go to a concert, it should be true escapism. You know, that, that's what I'm looking for when I go to a concert. I, I want to escape everything and just be, you know, in that room with the music. So. We try to make sure that our shows embody that and, and yeah. that we can really project that in, in what we do, especially with the, the live music, you know. I love that. And I, 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 too, just love hearing you, like, list these people you're playing with. Uh, you know, the last time I saw you, I think it was your tour with St. Sonia. You know, you're, you're going to be on the road with uh, Nonpoint, and then you've got Rival Sons, you've got Clutch, you've got Aaron Jones, you've got Skillet. Like, those bands all cover quite a bit of ground of rock and roll. Blackstone Cherry somehow fits in with each one of them. Uh, hell, man, it, I think our problem has always been we can play with anybody. <laughs> and as, as as beautiful as that is, it kind of puts us in this thing of where exactly do they fit, you know? And it's always been a little bit of a struggle, but it is what it is, man. You know, we're just proud that we get the opportunities that we do. But yeah, yeah I mean, like that that's that's a pretty, I don't know, for, from, from my vantage point as a fan, you know, I don't think people listen to music the way that they used to, right? There's no borders for genres or formats or anything like that. Like we still operate in a world like that. I know, uh, you know, you and I talking, we, we have to, but, uh, I think for the, you know, the, the, the fan out there, 
they want to go have a great night of rock and roll or whatever kind of music, you know, disconnect from the the BS they've got going on in their life. They want to put headphones on, listen to music. Good. That's all that matters. You know, if, if it's good. A hundred percent, in my opinion, you know, however you escape is how you escape. You know, like I personally, for me, I, I do enjoy concerts, but my favorite way to ingest music is with headphones because I feel like that's what separates me from the world is when it's just, you know, direct. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's like, a, and not to get dark, but it's like that drug, like you just, you, you mm-hmm. put it in, man, and, and you've got it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm curious. So as, as I've been listening to the band, you know, over the years, I mean, since the, the first album came out uh, nearly 20 years ago, uh, unless I'm mistaken, you guys have rarely invited special guests onto songs. Now you've done it a couple of times. Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm has joined you, you know, the one and only Warren Haynes has joined you, but generally you keep it all Blackstone Cherry. And in, especially in today's day and age of rock and roll, that actually stands out. That's pretty unique. Is that a uh, conscious decision or is that just how it, it takes shape? Hey, man, it's just how it's always kind of taken shape, really. You know, I mean, there's there's a ton of artists that we think it'd be so dope to collaborate with, you know, yeah. but it's we're also kind of backwards, you know, and, and, and <laughs> the way and I mean that in like the best way possible where we're from, like, you know, you grow up, you don't you just take care of stuff on your own because you feel like it's a burden or a bother to ask somebody else. You know what I mean? So it's I, sometimes asking somebody if they would want to be a part of something almost feels like you're bothering people, you know, especially if it's people that you haven't got to talk to in person or stuff like that. So I guess we're a little shy, <laughs> but we love so many artists and so many bands, man. Honestly, it's something that we've talked about and we would love to do in the future at some point. It's just finding that right thing and, and the right person and, and doing everything, you know, the right way. Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, I, I think too, like I have to think like as you, you guys tour with such a, uh, a wide range of bands, you probably get that sense too. Like, man, we could, you know, have this artist or this artist and just cover a lot of ground that way. Yeah, well, and, you know, man, and that's that's what I love about it is, you know, we've, like I said, we've had Lizzie sing on a couple songs. Um, and then, you know, she did Pieces Free with us live. And, and then we did a, an acoustic version. But other than that and Warren, it's like you've got, you know, the arguably the queen of of new rock and roll and metal with Lizzie. And then you've got Warren Haynes, who's like the king of the jam band circuit. So it's like, you know, you've two opposite ends of the spectrum, but they're the, the way they contribute to the songs is is both equally beautiful. Yeah. Well, and, and the way you describe them to the queen and the king of, of their respective, you know, genre or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it just you guys, you know, when you do have a special guest you go all out oh yeah well we try to anyway (laughs) you know you you want it to be cool man like it's we we love stuff like that you know and we we love jamming and and all that good shit man it's just it's especially since the world opened back up after you know in the post-pandemic world every band has been so busy since that it's been hard for for us anyway as a band that tours you know for the majority of our our livelihood it's been hard for us to have time to really do much of anything other than, you know, write and record a record, put it out and get on the road. That's just kind of the, the way. <laughs> but that's how you guys, I mean, that's how you guys have always been, isn't it? Yeah, dude, man, from the start, it was put out a record, go tour until it's time to put out another record so you can go tour some more, you know? So it's, 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 it's much like the seventies again, you know, where in back in those days, Bands are putting out a record a year or a record, you know, they're putting out records pretty often so they could go on tour, you know, and then it got to a point where records sold more than ticket sales did through the 90s and, and stuff. And and now we've reverted back to, well, everybody gets music for a $14 monthly fee now. Yeah. So it's uh, bands, you know, we bands like us, we have to put out records number one, because we want to write and record new music. You know, we always want to continue to grow our sound. And, and experiment. But number two, we, we want new material. So when we go back to a place like the machine shop or somewhere, you know, that we've got a new song or two to play the people or, or at least a different set list or something, you know? Yeah, for sure. Well, you know, even as, as you say that, like, it makes me think too, you guys seem very uh, selective in the cover songs that you do. But like, <laughs> just like your special guests, like when you do, man, 
you guys nail it. You go all out. Uh, what's that process like for you guys picking those, like deciding on this song is worthy of covering or or where worthy of, of trying to cover it? Man, it's always, we've always tried to <clears throat> look at a song and go, could it be believable that we wrote it? You know, can can we make this to where if somebody's never heard this before, they think it's one of our songs. And that's kind of been our mantra when it comes to covers. You know, the I think the closest we've ever, with the exception of the acoustic version of the Tracy Chapman cover, because the electric version is totally different. You know, that's yeah. like, you've got the acoustic version, which is what we play live a lot of times, because that's the one that went to radio. But like the Blackstone Terrified version of it, if you will, would be the electric version, you know, the the heavier version of that. But I think the only one we've ever done where we kind of just copied it, we we did it exactly how a, a different band did it, just us playing it and putting our own kind of little spins on it here and there were Shapes of Things and Evil. Because that version of Shapes of Things was the version that Jeff Beck did with uh, Rod Stewart singing. And then the version of Evil We Do is the version that Cactus did, um, you know, not the yeah. uh, not the old version. But, you know, those we do very similar to, you know, what would be an original-ish version. But, you know, you look at what's love got to do with it. We were doing a press trip in England, <clears throat> and we were staying at the Hard Rock in London. We were doing the premiere for the Royal Albert Hall DVD. And I went outside to have a cigarette, and I was walking back through the lobby, and you know, I kind of waved, told the dudes good night or whatever. And what's love got to do with it came on just playing, you know, in the hard rock because they've always got videos and music playing. And John Fred looked over at Ben apparently and said, Man, Chris would kill that if we could figure out how to do a version. So the next time we were on the bus, which was about a week later, just sat in the back lounge <clears throat> with a guitar, listening to the song, I was like, Okay, how could we reimagine this? And you know, it came out pretty, pretty rocking. It sounds like it was written like a rock song now. So and that's that's kind of always been our thing, you know, is is if we're going to do a cover, let's try to make it at least sound like we could have written the song, you know, mm -hmm. and not just like, oh, that's that song and they're doing it. You know, let's at least try to make it sound like we could have written. It. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. Uh, Yeah, that mindset of, you know, not just like, how do we make it our own, but like, how do we actually sound like we wrote this like we came up with this I, I think that's a really cool way to to approach it yeah i mean at that point it's it's just trying to further your own brand and everything um well what's next man uh you know it's crazy to think we're not that far away from the one year mark now of screaming at the sky you've got all these yeah, tours coming up are you already thinking about the next record man you know the the thoughts are starting to creep in of like Oh, shit. you know, we're coming up on a year that the record's been out. We're going to have to, you know, get in the back of the bus and, and start coming up with something pretty soon. But the good thing is, man, is like I said, we're on the road and we do the majority of our writing on the back of the bus. So we're on the road the next several months pretty heavy. So I I, I see, you know, a lot of writing after sound check and, and even after shows, a lot of times we'll be writing songs. So. But no, man, we're, you know, Blackstone Cherry always on tour. That's our, that's our motto, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I love it, man. Well, Chris Robertson of Blackstone Cherry, thank you so much for hanging tonight. Uh, listen, if you get the chance to see Blackstone Cherry live on the road, do not miss it. Stay caught up on everything going on in the world. Get that full tour schedule, uh, that never-ending tour schedule at blackstonecherry.com. Chris, man, come back to the show anytime. Cannot wait to, to hang again soon. Thank you so much for having me. That wraps up this episode of Loudwire Nights On Demand. Stay caught up with everything happening in the world of rock and metal on the Loudwire app and at loudwire.com.